I'm Chris Clark, the General Manager of Quicken & Company London. As a PR agency, we are fascinated about the forces of change which shape our world. We believe that a restless curiosity about understanding those forces of change are key to effective PR and communications campaigns. As part of our annual trends research, Hothouse Foresight, this year we partnered with North Star Research to actually get more of a quantitative understanding about some of these issues and trends. Pete Zutis from North Star led this work. This was an exciting piece of research where we polled almost 1,000 people across the UK and the US to get the opinions of the general population and that of key professional groups differentiated by salary, job type, and engagement with current affairs. We found both striking differences and unexpected similarities on many of the issues polled. You will hear a little bit more about the research findings in this film, but for the full research on media, politics, economics, business, society, and technology, you can download it online from our website. At this year's launch, we also got the perspectives on the coming year from Adam Bolton at Sky, Paul Mason, BBC Newsnight, and Bronwyn Maddox from Prospect Magazine. What we're seeing is this inevitable tension existing between an ageing population, uh, fewer tax receipts, and also questions are beginning to be asked very legitimately about where does the role of the state begin and actually where does it end. The initiative which uh, we worked with the Alternative Conversation on was called the National Conversation. And the objective of this was very simple. It was to see whether or not we could have a real conversation about is the welfare state fit for purpose in 2013. Well, the major outcome was this idea that people are really interested in political issues, even if they're not particularly interested in political parties at the moment. And that's because issues are rich in ideas, they're rich in complexity. People are open to new thinking, people are empathetic, people are often less fearful uh, than today's leaders. I think these are things that businesses, that politicians, that all of us need to crack if we're actually going to properly address uh, in a timely fashion some of the big social, economic and political challenges of this generation. Martin Sorrell, at the end of last year, said that actually corporate taxation was uh, essentially an issue and a question of judgment. And I think he raised a really interesting debate about what the role of business is in society. And our belief is that potentially corporate taxation will become one of those issues which will be uh, quite defining when it comes to corporate reputation <coughs> over the next decade. And I think potentially there is a situation where many politicians have fallen into a rather populist uh, trap. I think the reality is that so many people have actually taken the minority practices of tabloid journalists and actually uh, written that across the entire media conversation. And I think it's hard not to imagine that actually the increasing role of the state in the press won't necessarily stop there. And I think all of us uh, that are involved in industries uh, around the media, it's highly likely that this will potentially be just the start of increasing, increasing intervention. 2013 is going to be a year which requires much more clarity of thinking. Companies will need to have greater conviction and a clearer point of view about the world, about where their business is headed, about the issues that are affecting their marketplace and the issues that are affecting their customers. Because it's only actually by looking outwards and not inwards will they be able to tap into the, the seeds of inspiration which will help them survive and thrive. Now, I remember being at the beginning of year <coughs> session uh, last year when an American speaker said that he thought that the word of the year was going to be fairness. I'm trying to be thinking about, about a word for this year and I think the real issue out there, which covers really all three of the headings uh, that uh, Chris just outlined, is, is the notion of public, or uh, in any sense the notion of not private. In other words, what has happened since uh, the credit crunch of 2007 is that the state uh, has come to play 
a bigger part in people's lives. At the beginning of this year, there was a great deal of gloom uh, about the coalition, particularly amongst Conservative MPs, uh, and they set five tests uh, for uh, David and David Cameron for performance this year, not all of which uh, are yet resolved. The first was the performance of the party uh, in the Eastleigh by-election. Uh, well, the performance of the party uh, was dire, but, and I'll leave you with this thought, if you look at the political construction of the budget, uh, what you see is nearly every single measure is back-ended. It's not coming in this April, it's coming in next April or the April afterwards. Whether you like them or you hate them, uh, I would not at this stage count out the Conservatives. I think we're at a 50-year turning point, uh, similar to the one we went through after World War II, similar to the uh, opening of what we call in America the Progressive Era in the 1900s. Um, as always, I think capitalism will recover its vigour, not just recover, you know, uh, as in survive. The longer this depression goes on, and it is, it's a mild depression that is kept mild by the continual pumping in of money. One of the things we know that happened in history is that at the end of these long periods of stagnation, how they tend to end is that somebody breaks for the exit. Somebody cuts for the exit and says, We're, you know these rules we've been going along with for so long, they don't work anymore. So we, country X, are going to break them. But there'll be a moment where people will go, we didn't know you could do that. We didn't know you could leave the euro. We didn't know you could leave Europe. We come to this. Uh, we didn't know you could uh, impose huge trade tariffs on people and get away with it. So I think there are, oh, we didn't know you could unlock your central bank to create inflation. What I'm increasingly aware of, and this will be in, of interest to brand people, I think, and consumer focused people, but m more is, is what this new economy, such as it has emerged. What it's doing to us is, is, is creating a new consciousness. As there's a new normal. The new normal to me is gay marriage. There is, there is a, an awareness of a, of a way of living that human beings want to live that we used to call progressive and liberal or 60s or whatever, new left. It's not, it's, it's mainstream. It's not new that these countries or economies have debt and deficits. But what is new is to try and deal with these economic problems at a time of ageing populations. All kinds of assumptions about healthcare, education, and in particular pensions. All, all this, of what uh, people thought that their governments are going to give them. Having to be ripped up, you know, the bald truth is, whatever your ideology, you're going to have to tell voters that they're going to have to give up some of these things that an older generation has enjoyed. Can democracies uh, deliver an answer to this, or the minute you broach these things as a government, do you get voted out? This is going to be a year when there's going to be a lot of focus on China, and I'm not one of those who, uh, the school who thinks that China will take over the world. Growth is slowing, it's been hit hard by the euro crisis, environment is something that is now uh, top of, of, of so many people's concerns. And there's a huge uh, worry about legitimacy of the government. I would be surprised if, in a couple of years, we um, were still hearing quite as much of this uh, when China rules the world rhetoric as we have been, and will be much more, uh, its problems and its internal concerns will be much more obvious. And so we asked... How should, pe how should the government proceed with policy? What, what would they do? What should they do? Reducing benefits on the first one, welfare and unemployment, about half say I will agree with, those, with that aspect. So yes, cut back a bit. Protect our pensions, cut back a bit on the delivery of welfare in terms of funds and, and provisions. The general population and professionals are generally saying of, out of all these things, Levison inquiry is not really one of our top concerns. Will it make media more accountable? The majority say absolutely will make it more accountable. Will it positively affect the stories and news we read? Yes, it will generally. 
So the first question, large companies' tax payments is an issue that concerns me. For the majority, 73% of professionals, 68% of Jeff Pop say absolutely concerns me. And then I am prepared not to use the services supplied by companies who pay lower taxes than they are expected to. 61% professionals, 56%. So there's a general willingness to start avoiding the services and products, products of company that people know avoid those tax payments.